fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hello, this is The Lone Ranger. The other day I was watching a cowboy trying to break an outlaw horse. That bronc was plenty mean and the cowboy was having a tough time trying to stick in the saddle. So a couple of the boys around the corral started to serenade the cowboy like this. Have you tried Wheaties? They're whole wheat with all of the bran. Won't you try Wheaties? For wheat is the best food of man. Well, the cowboy tamed the horse, just like man tamed the West with the help of wheat. It was the vast western prairies that attracted the white man, land on which to grow wheat to be made into flour to give man the energy it takes to live in a frontier country. Today, you can get that same frontier wheat energy, and here's how. Keep on eating your wheat, and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, had trailed Juan Quito, notorious outlaw, and two of Quito's men for several days. Upon reaching the outskirts of Stoneville, the masked man waited in a secluded spot while Toto went into town to make inquiries. Within a short time, Toto returned and pulled to a halt. Oh, well, Scott, well, Did you find out anything, Toto? Uh-huh. Storekeeper say, tall, dark-skinned feller with scar on left cheek. Stopped for supplies early this morning, Kimasabi. Him have two others with him. That must have been Keto. That right. Me find out them ride from town on South Trail. We'll pick up their trail there and follow them. Why you think them head so far south, Kimasabi? Oh, I'm puzzled about that. Two years ago, when Juan Keto was sent to prison, he swore vengeance against the ranchers in El Paso Valley and both of us because we formed a posse and helped in his capture. Uh-huh. Me remember. We'll keep on his trail until we find out just what he's up to. Here, Silver. <laughs> All right, let's go, Tuttle. Let's get him out there. Come on, Silver. Let's go. Meantime, in a secluded shack outside of El Paso, several men sat listening as one of the group spoke. As soon as Quito gets here, he'll tell us what we're going to do. He's a smart hombre and a mighty good leader, as Jake here can tell you. That's right. And here he comes now. It's about time to. So, you hombres are here already, eh, Buck? That's right, Juan. You can take my word, they're all good men, too. That's Smitty, that's Joe, and he's Hank. Buenos dias, senores. Ah, right. Now sit down, we shall have a talk, no? <laughs> ah, it's good to have a gang once more to work with me. How come we heard you rode south from El Paso with a couple of hombres a few days ago, Juan? <laughs> yeah, Juan, they're anxious to know all about that. <laughs> so I shall tell them and let them laugh with us, Buck. Uh, perhaps they have here of the hombre called the Lone Ranger. Yeah, yeah. we heard it. What about right. it? It's a mighty mean hombre to get mixed up with, Juan. That I find out, senor. Now, when I leave the prison, I find out from Buck that the Lone Ranger is planned to watch me. Yeah. You see, a few days ago, I recognized the masked man's Indian friend hanging around back in El Paso. I heard a couple of ranchers saying that Juan Quito was going to be watched close. And I figured the Lone Ranger was one of those who was going to do the watching. But I don't savvy. They all think you rode south. 
Heard them talking about it at the cafe. See, that's what I want them to think. <laughs> but if you doubled back and came here, and, and that masked man and Indian are trailing you, they'll find this hideout and they'll know you have a new gang. I <laughs> sure they will. <laughs> so, you do not think Juan Quito is clever, eh? When Juan Quito was seen riding south from El Paso, the Lone Ranger did follow. I made certain of that. Well, in that case, how do you expect him to... Tell him the trick you played on him in the Indian one. See, now I shall tell him. One time in El Paso, we had met a gambler who was once a play actor. He is tall like me. Once, when Buck and I are playing cards with him, he is make fun and talk like Juan Quito. Yeah, he was good at making, mimicking people. That is so. <laughs> Well, I have tell Buck to get him to meet me when I leave the prison. This hombre, Slick Jackson, agreed for a price to make up his face like me and to ride from El Paso openly with two other hombres we know. <laughs> Everybody thinks he's really Juan Quito who rode south. Sure, I saw him leaving. And he looked just like Juan, scar and all. <laughs> so you see, amigos, the masked man and his Indian friend are following the wild goose chase. Well, the real Juan Quito is here to make plans with you. <laughs> it was that night that Juan Quito and his gang went into action. Jed Holly's ranch was the first one hit. Jed was at the supper table with his wife, Ella, when the trouble started. The barn is showing fire. Get out and ring the farm bell. I'll run to the bunkhouse. Right, Jed. Jed ran quickly to get what cowpokes were in the bunkhouse, while Ella quickly went out and rang the big bell. The clang of the bell could be heard far out on the range, and knowing it meant trouble, the range riders rode hurriedly to the ranch house for help. For more than an hour, practically every man on the spread helped to fight the fire. Finally, the barn was in smoldering ruins but they had managed to save the other buildings from the flames. Jed and Ella stood with their foreman looking at the damage. Well, we lost the barn, but we did keep the fire from spreading, Jake. Oh, 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 oh. Steady there, boy. Hey, I told you and one of the other cow folks to stay out in the range with the cattle. Sure. But outlaw surprised us. He shot Joe. <laughs> I got away. There. Ran off some of our cattle. Do a gun. Still light enough for me to see him. Leader was Juan Quito. Huh? All right, come on, Tex. We go tell the sheriff pronto. It was the following night when Quito and his gang struck next at the Bar X spread. The day after the raid on the Bar X, the Lone Ranger and Toto were in a temporary camp some distance south near the town of Redton. While the Lone Ranger waited at the edge of town, Toto made sure the men they were trailing were still at the hotel. Then he went to the general store. Howdy, Indian. What can I do for you? Me want bacon and coffee. All right. Coffee. Hey, Tom. Didn't you say this morning that the sheriff was keeping an eye on an hombre named Juan Quito who's here in town? Sure did. Heard the sheriff and his deputy talking about it right in here. Seems like that hombre Quito is just out of jail. Used to be an outlaw. Well, there's something funny going on then. What, what do you mean? we just come over the telegraph that an outlaw named Juan Quito has been leading a gang up in the El Paso Valley. They hit two big spreads up there already. Set fire to buildings to attract attention while they rustled plenty of cattle. What say that is funny? Me come back for supplies. Me go now. Oh, wait a minute. I'll have them for you in a jiffy. Me what? not wait. <laughs> what tarnation got in here? A few minutes later, Tonto had reached the place where the Lone Ranger was waiting and told what he had heard. The Lone Ranger thought a moment, then spoke. Otto, I think we'll face the man at the hotel and make sure he is Juan Quito. You uh, said last night he had a back room on the ground floor. That right. We'll get to him without being seen. All right, let's go. He's just going to be... Oh, 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 oh. Riding along behind the buildings to the hotel, the Lone Ranger and Tonto dismounted in a grove of trees then made their way unobserved to the back door. Well, what is it? Caramba, a masked hombre. Get back inside. <laughs> He's alone, Toto. Close the door. Uh, well, why you do this, senor? Since I've lived the prison, I have done nothing wrong. You're one, Quito. Oh, <laughs> but of course. You, senor, should know that. 
Because if you and the El Paso Valley ranchers, poor Juan is staying in prison for a long time, no? I may not savvy him, Asabi. Me think him, Quito. As they talked, the Lone Ranger looked sharply at the man before him. He particularly noted the hairline, then glanced at his upraised arms. Suddenly, he spoke. Hello. This man is not Juan Quito. The darkness of his skin is a stain. Look at his hairline and his wrists. Ah, uh, that's right. Now me see that. Oh, I'm not Juan Quito. What of it? <laughs> We fooled you again, mister. My two friends sneaked in behind you just now and have you covered. Now both of you reach, and reach fast. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. G-Man Jimmy is eight years old. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws cause he knows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing oat cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right, each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios... Now to continue After going to the hotel room of the man who was posing as Juan Quito The Lone Ranger and Toto discovered that he was wearing a disguise Slick Jackson admitted he wasn't Quito And at the same time he called attention to the fact That his two friends had sneaked into the room behind the masked man and Indian I knew we'd come to a showdown soon Quito told me when I got you far enough south So he'd have a mighty good alibi <laughs> As if he'd need one anyway. Then we would have ambushed both of you. Hold it there. Hey, hey, what? Me and my deputy will do what shooting there is to do. The sheriff and deputy. That's right. Drop those guns, you two. He's got us, Slick. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't expect this. Get in there. Come on. You're just in time, right. Sheriff. Now I'll pick up my gun. Wait a minute, mister. Just stand still till I get this straightened out. We caught these two in our room, Don't Sheriff. Lie. Mr. We heard what you said about Keto telling them to ambush these two hombres. Oh, no, I, I trailed these three men here. Thinking that one was Juan Quito. I just learned he's someone else disguised as Quito. I figured something must be wrong with me getting word Quito's raging hob up in the El Paso Valley. But with you wearing that mask, I reckon we'll take all of him. Him not outlaw. Yeah, I reckon you'll find out anyway, Sheriff, so I might as well tell you. He's that honorary Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? That's right. I don't want the real Quito to find out about this. How don't I want to get back to El Paso Valley as soon as possible? I'll take these three hombres and lock them up for attempted murder. They won't get a chance to notify Quito. You and your friend pick up your guns and go ahead. <laughs> Me and the deputy will get these sidewinders to the jail. Thanks, Sheriff. Let's go, Toto. Uh... A few days later in their shack hideout near El Paso... Juan Quito and his gang were planning further trouble for the ranchers in the valley. Right now, we shall strike again at the Holly Spread. Senor Holly has prize horses in the North Range. At midnight tonight, we shall ride over there and steal them. Now, they may have a lot of cow folks watching one. There are only six of us, all told. <laughs> that I have think of, amigo. Jake is not known by sight. Early tonight, Jake will ride to town and say he saw our outlaw gang riding toward the Bar X spread at the end of the valley. You think that'll draw the ranchers and their men away, hmm? Exactly. Some of them are meeting in town tonight. They will form a posse, send for more men, and head for the Bar X. Then we go get the horses. Late that afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto pitched camp a short distance from El Paso in the hills. They rested their horses until after supper. Then they mounted and rode to the edge of town. Since darkness had fallen, and in spite of the fact that a bright moon had risen, the masked man decided he could risk riding along in the shadows to a grove behind the cafe where they stopped. Oh, sir, oh, sir. Oh, sir. I'll wait here, Toto, while you go into the cafe. You might learn something there. Uh -huh. Me stay at the back of the cafe. Me watch. Listen. Keep an eye out for anyone who might be spying for Quito. Me do that. 
Me go now. Me not stay long. Tonto entered the cafe and went to the back, where he stood in the shadows cast by the flickering oil lamps. At a nearby table, Jed Holly sat talking with a few other ranchers from the valley. Hey, get my men spread over my range, keeping watch. And I hope the rest of you did the same. Hey, hey, everybody! I saw several horsemen riding toward the Bar X spread. And I'm sure one of them was Juan Quito. I hid in the arroyo till they went by. And I got a good look at them. Hey, Sunday, this is our chance. All right, each of you get to your spreads and get your men. I'll meet you at the fork in the trail near the Bar X. We'll show that no good coyote can't get away with it this time. Tonto quickly left the cafe and hurried to the grove behind the cafe where the lone ranger was waiting. Kim Sabe, yes. fellow just come into cafe. Say him, see Keto gang heading for Bar X spread. I thought I heard a commotion around in front of the cafe. Uh, ranchers go get calc folks. Ask other men in cafe for help. We'll get right out to the Bar X, Tonto. This will be a good chance to... Wait, look. Someone's easing out the back door of the cafe. Uh, Kim Sabe, me see him for a minute and light from door. That same fellow who bring news of gang. Mm. He doesn't seem to want to go with the others. He's going between the buildings. Must have his horse waiting there. Get up there. Come on, we'll follow that man and find out what he's up to. He's said he'd be Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. A short time later, Jake arrived at the hideout shack and reported that the plan had worked. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Toto stopped in an arroyo nearby, from which they could observe the shack. The Lone Ranger spoke in a low tone. Toto, the moon's bright enough to show several horses ground hitched behind that shack. Is that right? I'm sure that's Keto's hideout. Now Holly's ranch is the nearest. Right over there and ask Holly to bring all the men he has. I'm certain he'll recognize you, Toto. Uh, I'll stay here and try to prevent them from leaving before you return. Now hurry. It may not take long. Steady, Scout, steady. Get him up, Scout. Time passed as the Lone Ranger watched and waited. Finally, he saw the door of the shack open. He immediately opened fire. For a few minutes, all was quiet. Then several shots rang out from the direction of the shack. Inside the shack, Juan Quito spoke to the others. Whoever is out there is in the arroyo. That's right, Juan. Must be someone who followed Jake from town. Yeah, it must be. Buck, you go to the back door and shoot. I shall shoot from the front. Right. Jake, you and one of the others climb out of the window on the side away from the arroyo and try to circle around behind him. All right, Juan. We'll sneak up on him before he knows what's what. We shall keep him busy from here. Now, get going. Right. Come on. Jake and one of the others climbed through the window and keeping the shack between them and the Lone Ranger, they ran straight back to the cover of the trees. Soon the other two followed, while Buck and Juan continued to fire from the shack. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger realized shots were coming from the side and from behind him. He was momentarily protected by the arroyo, but he knew that the outlaws had cut off his escape and that before long they'd move up on him. He glanced around continually and kept firing every time he saw the flash of one of the outlaws' guns. Great Horse Silver seemed to realize the danger and pawed the ground impatiently. Easy, Silver. Easy, big guy. Well, a spot of toe doesn't come soon with the ranchers. Time and again, the masked man fired until suddenly his guns were empty. More bullets. The Lone Ranger searched his belt but found it empty of bullets. Then he knew the outlaws knew his predicament as they began to move nearer. It was then that he heard a welcome sound, the furious beat of many hooves approaching fast. As he watched from the arroyo, a large group of horsemen came into view in the moonlight, and he saw the outlaws running toward the shack. No! I'm hit! Within a few minutes, the shack was surrounded and the fight was over. The Lone Ranger mounted Easy, Silver and rode from the arroyo to the men who crowded near the shack. Hey, there's another one. You wait. Him friend. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh. Hey, that must be the masked man the Indian told us about. Yeah, he kept him from leaving. Well, here they are, man. He told all his gang. 
Get out here, you. Get out, buddy. Mask man. It cannot be. Your plan didn't work, Keto. The man you used as a decoy is in jail. If these hombres did not come here just now, we would have shot you. We knew you were either wounded or out of bullets. That true, Kimasabi? Yes. You didn't get here any too soon, Toto. Thanks to you and the engine, mister, we've cut these coyotes. We'll take them into town, get them in jail where they belong. Good. We're glad we could be of help in capturing these men. Now that everything's under control, we'll leave them in your hands. Goodbye, and good luck, Jed. All right, let's go, Tonto. Uh, Goodbye, Tonto. Uh, Come up, Scout. Hey, Tonto, we don't even know him. Hey, I wonder who he is. Well, that's something even I don't know. But I do know he's a friend of us, Ranchy. Uh, next time, this friend of yours will not get away so easy. There'll be no next time as far as you're concerned. You hombres will hang for killing one of my cowpokes. Yes, I will, Jed. We'll take care of even though he put your head in a noose, Keto, I bet you don't know who that masked man is. Caramba! Even a fool would know that, senor. He is the Lone Ranger. <laughs> copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.